Game's about to start soon. Yeah, yeah. Should be a good one. Should be. Should should be, yeah. Yep. You ever wonder what it would be like if we both paid, paid off, the, off rest the rest at the, at the same, same time? time? Well, that got a little rough. I think it was worth it. Low quality fans of a high quality Boons team. That is not a dub. Beh. Beh. Now, before we do it, before we even get into it, I know. I know. I know. But I'm not, I'm not going to complain about it the whole video. I'm going to try not to bring it up over and over again. Because do I feel like we got the worst side of the officiating tonight? Yeah, I do. I feel like that. I feel like that. But... That happens sometimes. Now, I'm not going to sit here and bitch about it because what does that do? What does that do? Sometimes that happens. It is what it is. That game was still winnable. Sure was. Sure fucking was. We didn't win it. I am kind of glad we got out of it without any major injuries as far as I know. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Tough game to watch at times. That is their first win. In over a month, I think, they've lost five in a row. That was their first win, and, and it was the sixth game and all that good stuff. Brutal, brutal. Kaprizov only played half the game. He took a hit from Frederick that was, he was falling. Frederick comes in, and he got called for boarding on it. It was a bit of a dirty hit. I thought Frederick had time to to come back, but I don't think it was, like, malicious dirty. I think it was just a, a kind of a negligence thing where it was like, it'll be fine, and just continues to check. Game was really chippy. It was chippy from the start. I wasn't upset about the first period officiating so much. I felt like all the calls against us were valid. And yeah, maybe one or two got missed against them. But I really thought coming out of the first, I don't know, the officiating was what it was. And in the first six minutes of the second, they missed like eight calls against the Wild. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Uh, boy. No Greenway or Erickson EK. Erickson Eck for, uh, for Minnesota. And like I mentioned, Kaprizov only played half the game Rossi and Boldy their first I, that sounds like cartoon names uh but yeah they debut for the wild good for them Boldy even got a goal they are third in the league in goals scored per game all of their other like stats are pretty bottom tier middling this was a winnable game Soyman gets to start we now have two players in COVID protocol with DeBrusque and Nosek out there that means Bleed's going to slot in on the fourth line and Steen's going to stay. Steen is going to stay on the third. Exciting. But we did take a massive blow right before the game started. And by right before it, I mean earlier in the day. McAvoy is out with a lower body injury. Uh, he's day-to-day. -day. It does not sound serious. Cassidy did not think it was a long-term thing. But as of right now, he's day-to-day. -day. John Moore. John Moore slotted in next to Grizz. For top pairing. Oh, I don't know what happened to Jack Ashan. I don't know if maybe there's some COVID stuff down there. I haven't checked. But uh, John Moore wouldn't have been my first guy. Maybe he just earned it. I don't know. That's fine. Rask signs a PTO. Let's talk about that for a second. PTO with Providence. Immediately, their next two games get postponed because of a COVID outbreak uh, for the other team, for the Phantoms, I believe. So we're going to have to wait a little while till we actually see him play. The PTO is just to kind of get him back up to game speed. Everybody's talking about how he looks great in practice. He looks like he's ready to go for the most part. Not quite, but almost ready to go. The deal appears to be a one-year deal, although details have not come out yet. A lot of places are, are, a lot of people are reporting already that it's basically signed. Um, but it just hasn't come out yet. Cool. We'll probably dive into that more later. Uh, in a different video when he's actually up here and we'll talk about how this affects the team. It's a good thing, guys. It's a good thing. We have three goalies who can start. It's a good thing. Fourth game in six days. That's not really an excuse, given the fact that Minnesota is playing their, uh, I think, what, second in the past three weeks or something like that. So I'm not really going to sit here and, and make excuses about who's playing too much or too little. This broadcast sucked. It just sucked. The, the commentators forgot to talk about the game for large stretches of the game. 
They were very clearly one-sided in some of their comments. The weird camera angles. It just sucked. This ESPN. This sucked. And I'm not one of those old boys that's like, I like it the way I like it. This just sucked, dude. This was like you're walking down the street and there's a guy in front of you who's got the hat on backwards. He's wearing two collared shirts and somehow both the collars are popped. He has sunglasses bigger than his fucking face and he's smirking. He's smirking as he's walking. He's not looking at you. You can't really tell because the shades, but he's just smirking. It's like his face is stuck in that, that pose. And then all of a sudden he whips out his phone and he just starts playing music loudly. He has AirPods in, doesn't use the AirPods, rather have a speaker on his phone. It sucks as much as that guy. God. And then he whistles at a girl. Cat calls her. It sucks that much. That guy sucks a lot. Don't be that guy. Don't be ESPN broadcast. What the fuck? Fix your shit. All right, I'm done with my rant. But it sucked, dude. Sucked. Puck drops and 32 seconds in. Riley is going to go for tripping, and it was tripping. We do kill that penalty. Swayman has to come up a little big in this. But we kill the penalty, they have momentum, and then this really weird, rare moment. A few minutes into the game, and it's Fiala and Dumba are going to go at the same time. They're both going to go. We're going to get a five on three for two full minutes. It was a delayed penalty, and then Bergeron had a nice shot that uh, Kakanen got his glove on. It bounces over him and behind Pasta was there to shove the puck in, but clearly got taken down. I wish they just awarded the goal in that scenario because I wanted it. That's how that works. Five on three. And we suck at the power play right now. Even five on three. Coyle misses on a backdoor shot. It was a nice feed with some pepper, but he misses, hits the net. And that's really our only chance. In fact, we give up a two on one during the five on three. That's how bad we are at power play. Unbelievable. 26 seconds left of the five on three, and Bergeron's going to go for tripping, I believe. This would have been a huge confidence booster, killing a five on three for the Minnesota Wild, but there's still 26 seconds left of five on four because only one penalty basically gets canceled out. And as it's expiring, there's just a couple seconds left of it. Riley is running the point really well. He feeds Howla down on the left. Howla feeds it right back up, and then quick one touch. We're inching forward the whole time while we're doing these little passes. Quick one touch pass to Taylor Hall. He blasts this, takes a deflection, goes under Kakanen's five hole, and that's one zero. That's one zero, and you feel decent because you kind of thought all hope was lost on the momentum train, but you feel good about that. They now go on the power play for a buck 25. We kill it. It's a really good penalty kill. There's a lot of, of getting into the lanes and clearing the puck out easily, even having a couple chances for ourselves. Really happy with that kill. 5-11 left in the period, and it's a 6-on-5 because it's a delayed penalty. During the delayed penalty. Now, they keep it for 30, 40 seconds. The play is live. We can't get a stick on it. Carlo is battling in front with Zuccarello. Zuccarello drops his stick, and Carlo uses his stick to just whoosh, fling it to the boards as he's trying to pick it up. During a delayed fucking penalty, the ref just like, mm, you too, bud. We're going to get a 5v3 penalty kill for a full two minutes. They're going to call Carlo for that as well during the delay. So we got two guys in the box. And their power play looks so much better than ours. It's very spread out. They're whipping the puck back and forth. Kaprizov misses a fucking open net to just 30 seconds later go to the other side, bottom of the right dot. It's a beautiful pass across the, across the slot, and he just hammers this. Sway doesn't have a chance. None of us have a chance to stop this. This is just really good execution. And that's a tie ball game. Carlo. Dude, I was so mad about that. I don't get what he's thinking there. I really don't. 3-12 left in the period, and the refs continue to 
hog the spotlight. They toss both centers out. It's a wild face-off win in our zone. And Broden just takes a heavy slap shot from the top of the slot. Takes a deflection. I believe Sturm gets the last touch on this. Deflects past Swayman. 2-1. Just like that. And that's the way the period's going to end. But not before. A buck 48 left. And a referee between Freddie and Zook after the whistle. They're going at it. They're jawing at each other. And Freddie just rips his helmet off. Guys, it's a newer rule. It is. And it came about because when you lose your helmet now, you have to go directly back to the bench. So pulling someone's helmet off is basically interference because you're forcing them to go back to the bench. It was after the whistle, so it's a little different. But that's always going to get called. Why are we doing this? We do kill this penalty. There's a buck 48 left of the period. We kill all that. And then obviously go into the second and kill off the last few seconds on it. Start of the second. Wild are way more engaged. But there is a blatant pull down on Hall. We get a power play. 30 seconds of the power play. There's a blatant tripping on Pasta. But now we're starting to pick our spots as the referees. So no call there. But again, I'm not going to bitch about it. Because we lost this game on our own. We did. No dice on the power play because we have a bad power play. Ten minutes in, and Freddie and Kulikov go at it. Freddie comes in and hits Kaprizov. Like I mentioned before, it's a little bit of a dirty hit. Uh, your teammate was absolutely going to stand up and be like, let's go. Kaprizov does not return to the game after this hit. I really hope it's nothing serious. That guy is a gem. Yes, I know that he is was drafted with a Bruins pick in the fifth round. I'm not going to hold that against the Bruins because... No one fucking, everybody else passed on this guy five fucking times too. Whatever. We didn't, I didn't even know if we would have picked him with our pick. So Freddie and Kulikov go at it. Freddie wins the fight. Good. Whatever. That's offsetting. Who cares? Uh, they do get Freddie for the extra two minutes on the boarding. And we do kill the penalty. But as soon as it expires, Boldy gets his first NHL goal. We clear the puck out to kill the penalty, and we make a change. But they're heads up. They're aware of this. It's a long change because it's the second period. They get the puck right back into the zone. And, and Boldy takes it down. He's in the center slot, and he feeds off to Foligno, who's on Foligno. Marcus Foligno, not Nick Foligno. Marcus collects the puck on that right dot and sends it right back to Boldy, who has used the wild player in front of him as kind of a pick. He skates slightly back more towards the left, receives a nice pass, waits out Swayman as Swayman moves to attack, and he's got the top half of the net basically to shoot at. That's a 3-1 lead, but I really felt like we were winning this game. That goal goes in, I feel shitty, but I felt like we could really come back in this. We just needed a couple things to go our way. Ten seconds later, uh, interference on Bergy. That kind of disproves my whole, we can win this, yay, optimism, but we do kill it. And then shortly after, we get a power play. Dumba goes for interference. And it's just it's just really nice awareness by Bergeron. There's a shot on net. Bergeron's right in front of Kakanen. He collects the rebound and just shoves it out to Marchand, who's on the bottom of the right circle. And he makes no mistake with this one. Hammers it high. Easy goal for him. That's 3-2. We're going to end the period that way. It's just a one-goal game going into the third. We can do this. One minute into the third, Felino, Freddy, they fight. Marcus wins this fight. He does. Uh, and Freddy gets the extra again for a high stick. In the replay, I couldn't see it very well, but I guess he did kind of, maybe he did make some contact there, but at the time I was livid. Of course I was. That's a trade I'll take all day, though. Eliminate the two-minute extra, right? But for the five minutes... We get rid of Marcus Foligno, and Freddie takes a seat for us. That's a great trade. I'll take that. It didn't work out for us. That's a great trade. Quickly into this power play, I think it's a makeup call because Rossi gets called for a pull down on Carlo. I didn't see much there. 4v4. I'm just so mad. Hartman with a blatant... He's in the circle. This is before the puck's dropped. In the circle interfering with the fate. He should have gotten waved off over and over. Howla just puts a stick down and gets waved out of the circle. And Hartman's like, he's even gesturing with a stick, like, get the fuck out of here. Like, you were the only one moving. Like, I don't... Mm, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Six minutes in, the boys are buzzing. There is pressure. There's heart. There's attitude. 
it just never works out. Seven minutes left. Pasta, great back checking play. Dives to split up a two on one. That was fun. Just never works out. Coil does have a couple chances. One of them basically an open net and he can't get the shot off. Um, we just couldn't get a bounce to go our way in the final 10 minutes. I'm not torn up about this game. It was a 3 2 loss to a pretty good wild team, even though that they have lost a bunch in a row. I do think that's a good team. I don't feel that bad about this one. I want us to come out and, and obviously get a win in our next game, obviously. But this was one of those ones where every couple of months you have a ref game where you just go, Jesus Christ, what was that? And it's not even about the refs like beating you down and being really biased or whatever. I mean a ref game in the sense where they just call a bunch of shit. And it feels like they're just calling whatever they feel like. There's n there's no consistency or anything. Once in a while you get those games, and those games are a coin flip. Sometimes you win those games, sometimes you don't. But I know the NHL already feels like a coin flip in a lot of games. These games are especially so. That's like my, that's my only game, though. I can't judge a lot of players on this. I, I didn't like some of the penalties that were taken. Freddie and Carlo uh, are the ones that I really point to in that. Freddie fought twice, but this was a much worse game for him than last game, I would say, which is kind of funny because we we do like to see him get physical. Um, I, I, I literally can't remember a play made by half the team. Like you could start naming players for me, and I'd be like, I don't remember what they did. I don't remember what they did. And maybe that's my stupid brain, or maybe it's the... just wasn't a lot of pressure on the wild there was a lot of point plays we did take a lot of shots to the point but it just never felt like we really had control at any point other than maybe the last seven or eight minutes but that felt like frantic effort to get back in the game more than actual control of the game steen still finds opportunities he didn't get one tonight but he puck just finds him in the offensive zone love to see that he still deserves to stay in the lineup I really think, obviously, McAvoy would have helped in this game. I think DeBrusque would have really helped in this game. Having a guy who has that shot that he has when he can be effective with it. And DeBrusque always seems to, every like twice a game, has one play that just gets to the front of the net and gets everyone revved up. I think DeBrusque could have really we really could have benefited from him being in the lineup. Now, obviously, that's that's who gives a shit talk because he has COVID, like, or he's in COVID protocol. We, he's not available to us. So what are we even talking about? But I do think he would have been beneficial to us. Um, yeah, that's uh, next game is Saturday. I'm looking forward to it. I, I got nothing special to say here. This is, this is just a loss that you just got to kind of go, all right, tip the hat, keep going, keep chugging along. We've won three of four. Let's get back in the wing column on Saturday. How about we just say, Go Bees!